graph is now. I can do that. Because we're not looking at the graph and creating the table. We are creating the table in order to graph. OK, ready? Good. So our function from scratch is 8x divided by x squared plus 1. So we can, I can start the table with what we have, because we already have a few things that are clear. Negative infinity to infinity and 0 and 0 and 0 here and 0 here. y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. And we know it's symmetric. It's odd symmetry with respect to the origin. So that, that part is clear. But now let's determine the first and the second derivatives. So here's the first derivative. x squared plus 1 squared in the denominator. And now the numerator. Please leave the 8 outside, so let's not waste our time with that. Top function prime is 1, so this is x squared plus 1 minus the top function times the denominator prime, which is 2x. That's how we get the negative. And that is correct. So this is 8, and we have x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared divided by x squared plus 1 squared. So this will be 8 negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. And this is correct as being negative 8 uh, x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 cubed. Yes, we needed the negative 8 with the x plus 1, x minus 1 to find the critical numbers. So all that is perfect. Yes, that's how we get the uh, negative 8. So we do have the negative 1 with 0 and the positive 1 with 0, so that's clear. Um, now let's study the sign again. In between with 0, I have positive. And outside, let's say with 10, I have negative, as well as negative 10. So that all that is good. So now let's uh, find the second derivative. So the second derivative. See, once we have, we, this is me. Once I have a mistake, I start everything from scratch. Because who knows what happened. So we differentiate the top. And the denominator is squared. Yeah, why do they keep coming? It's because uh, it's times negative 1. Oh, no, no, of course. Or do you keep it squared? Of course. OK, I'm like wondering what's going on. So as I said, now, now, now I don't trust anything I, I do. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm talking and writing, and there is no excuse. No, 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 it's to the fourth, of course. Eventually, we'll, we'll simplify to that. We're not there yet. Good. So if you, if we understand and we see the mistake, it's, it it means that we we know where you know what we're doing. That's awesome. How is it four now? Because uh, that's the quotient rule. I differentiate the top times the bottom minus the top times the bottom prime over the denominator squared. Okay. That's okay. I I'd, I'd rather go back and check. Good. Now the numerator prime is 2x times the denominator minus the numerator times the denominator prime, which is 2x squared plus 1 times 2x. So far, so good. Are you okay with everything so far? Yes? Mm -hmm. Very good. So then negative 8 is outside. I have to factor out 2x. And I will factor out an x squared plus 1. So 2x and x squared plus 1 are out. And this is x squared plus 1 to the fourth. And that's how I get to the third. Let's see what is left at the top. An x squared plus 1 is left. This is gone. This is gone. But I have 2 times these 2. Negative 2x squared and plus 2. 
Ah, I see now. You forgot to give me the X. It's not your fault. But that's where the whole thing changes. You forgot to tell me X. It's 16, it's positive 16 X, X squared minus 3. And that's why all this is messed up. Is that clear? Yeah. So you either said it and I didn't hear it and I didn't write it. My apologies. It's my mistake. But that made the whole thing change. This little thing from here. Everything else is fine. So uh, we have here a negative 16x, and this is negative x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 1 to the third. I factored out. So it's 16x, x squared minus 3, divided by x squared plus 1 to the third. Now we are in business. See if I'm not prepared with my own previous notes. My fault. Sorry about that. So x equals 0, so the second derivative set equal to 0 gives us three solutions. One is the square of 3 as we got it before. The other one is negative the square of 3, and another one is 0, which is a totally different story. OK, do we understand where the mistake was? So I did not write that x, and that's why I had to do it again, because something wasn't working right. Okay. So now we can go back to the table. So it's 0 here. It's negative the square root of 3 is 0 here. Is the square root of 3 is 0 here. We already determined these numbers to be negative 4, negative 3.5, 4, and 3.5. OK. Now we study the sign of the second derivative. That makes the whole different, the whole thing change completely. So now, this is a different story. All this is positive, but now this is a product that will give us the sign, which is totally different. Oh, we already did with the calculator a few minutes ago. We just plugged in. We plugged in this in the calculator, and we got negative 3.5, and this with the calculator, we got 3.5 in the function. Okay, so now, let's study the sign here. To the left, like let's say negative 10. Negative 10 will be 100 minus 3. This is positive, but with negative 3, with negative 10 is negative. That's exactly what we, it makes sense. Okay, now let's plug in negative 1. When I plug in negative 1, this is negative 2, and this is negative 1, so it will be positive. Now I plug in 1 and I get negative. Now I plug in 10, and I get positive. OK. Now we're ready to graph. And yes, let's write it here, too. Um, so this is an inflection point. Uh, this is a local min. This is an inflection point. This is a local max. And this is an inflection point. So one more time, it's impossible for a function to have a horizontal asymptote and approach it like this. By definition, an asymptote, vertical or horizontal, the function has to approach it, cannot cross it or do anything like that. Is that clear? OK. Very good. So. Let's plot the points. I'm going to take a bigger unit here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, I have a negative four. OK. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. OK, so nothing else counts but the table. Okay. I plot the points first. Negative the square of 3 and negative 3.5, 3.5. Negative 1, negative 4, 0, 0, 1, 4, 
and um, the squared of 3, 3.5. Okay, now we are in business. So from approaching 0, the function is decreasing to negative 3.5, absolutely opening downward, mandatory. It hits the inflection point, it changes concavity, it continues to decrease to the local minimum. Changes concavity, it decreases to the local minimum. Still opening upward, but now it's increasing to the next inflection point. Where it changes concavity, I don't care about the table anymore. It has to have a symmetric a function is odd. What I have here, I have to have in the first quadrant. I don't care to look anymore. So this is f of x, 8x over x squared plus 1. Now we can check, only now, not before, please, we can check with the graphing task. So here's the function. I'm going to use zoom 6. I know the graph. I don't have any secrets. It's not going to surprise me in a bit. Of course, it has to open down. At some point in time, it has an inflection point. I really don't know. I can't say where it is, but we know where it is. It opens upward to the minimum, continues to the inflection point, changes concavity, maximum, still opening down, decreasing, changes concavity, opening up so that it can approach the asymptote. Is that clear? That's how we know when there is an error. It doesn't match. So a function cannot approach an asymptote like this. It can from here, but not from below. It has to open downward to get closer and closer to the asymptote. Clear? Excellent. Good. Next problem. This is my page two or three. Three. Okay, next question. Uh, find the absolute max and minimum values of the function if they exist and so on and so forth. Um, we are given a closed interval. Oh, sorry, sorry. We are given a closed interval, which is negative 4, comma 5. So let's look at f of x x plus 3 raised to 2 thirds minus 5. We are only interested in the first derivative. We are not graphing the function. I only need the table and it has to go from negative 4 to 5 and nothing else. They're asking us to find max min. What do I have to do first? Awesome, excellent. So f prime of x equals 2 thirds x plus 3 to negative 1 third equals 2 over 3 the cube root of x plus 3. By the way, why am I finding the, the um, uh, first derivative? For the critical numbers first. If the function has no critical numbers, then it has no max min. So is there a critical number? Say it again. OK, it will never be 0. Exactly. Why is negative 3, is it negative 3 in the domain? Yes, it is. Because if it's outside, then no critical numbers. But why is negative 3, why is x equals negative 3 a critical number? Why? Because x plus 3 exactly being 0 makes x equals negative 3. And f prime undefined where the function is defined. That's, that's very important. Because if the function is not defined at negative 3, that cannot, that cannot be a critical number. Excellent. Well done. So then, <coughs> the first derivative is undefined. But what is the function value there? 
Yeah. It's zero here, but zero minus five, correct? Um, Negative five. Let's plug in this function in the graphing calculator and check negative 4 and 5. So in y equals, so let's put in this new function, uh, the cube root, uh, no, let's write this is, uh, that's fine, x plus 3, parentheses, power, in parentheses, please, the power, 2 over 3, I don't know, maybe you have a sophisticated calculator that works, but I be very careful. So I want to evaluate this function at negative 4 and I want to evaluate it at 5. At negative 4 I get negative 4 and at 5 I get negative 1. Perfect so far. One more step and we can move on to the next problem. I need to study the sign. So let's plug in here negative 4. When I plug in negative 4, I get negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. It's the cube root, right? So 2 over negative 3, this must be negative. If I plug in 0, just to check, I get a positive number. I don't need this in the table. Okay, now is the moment of truth. If these two rows do not work well together, then I know I have an error somewhere. So from negative 4 to negative 5, what does the function do? Is that supported? Good. From negative 5 to negative 1, is that supported by the sign of the first derivative? But good. So then here's what I have. I'm not graphing anything. So I have negative 4 negative 4, I have negative 3, negative 5, and I have 5 comma negative 1. So this is negative 4, negative 4, lower negative 3, negative 5, and higher negative, uh, positive 5, negative 1. Uh, 5 comma negative 1 is this point. 5 comma negative 1. This point is negative 3, negative 5. And this point is even better to write it. And this point is negative 4, negative 4. So what do we conclude about <laughs> this? Absolute, not local, right? Because it's at the end of the interval. So this is an absolute max. Very good. What do we conclude about this one? Local and absolute. Local because it's in the middle of the interval. And it's also absolute because it's the smallest. Local, local, and uh, absolute, min. What do you say, will you say about negative 4, negative 4? Nothing. It cannot, since it's at the end point of the interval, it cannot be only, it can only be max or min, absolute, but it cannot be. This is negative 4, right? But this is negative 5. And this is negative 1. So this is somewhere in between those two. Nothing. Local and absolute min, absolute max. Agreed? Yes? Any questions? Is this OK? So this is the lowest. This is nothing. And this is the absolute max. And this one is local and absolute. Perfect. OK. Cornerstone Electronics determines that its total weekly profit in dollars from the production is given by this function. So they are giving us the function P of X, 1500 divided by X squared minus 6X plus 10. Find the number of amplifiers X for which the total weekly profit is a maximum. Very good. How do I determine how many amplifiers? We're not asked to find the maximum profit, but we're asked to find um, how many they should manufacture in order to get the maximum profit. What do I have to do? How? First, very good, excellent. So P prime of X. 
I would like to write this. It's up to you. To which power? Very good. I would like to use this. It's up to you. You can use the quotient, but remember the numerator prime will be zero. And leave the one 1500 outside. So this is negative 1500 times x squared minus 10 minus 6x plus 10 to which power? Negative six. Excellent. 2x minus 6. Great job. I will rearrange. Leave the negative 1500 outside. Good. Say it again. That's the power rule. Bring down the power, subtract one from the power, and differentiate the inner function. Better? Good. I will factor out the 2. So this is negative 3,000 x minus 3 over the same thing squared. I have the derivative. What do I do with the derivative now? Excellent. When is this function 0? Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Is 0 when x minus 3 is 0, which means x equals 3. So we need to manufacture 3, but I don't know if the 3, x equals 3, gives a maximum or a minimum. I have no clue. Yes? It's negative 3,000x minus 3 over what squared? This one. I just didn't have enough room. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me write it. No, let's write it. I wasn't lazy. I was just didn't. Yeah, sorry. So then we have P prime and P of x. Although we're not asked to, we're not going to determine if you don't want to. Of course, infinity is just a myth. So this is 3 and this is 0. I have to study the sign. But when I study the sign, I'm not going to plug in anything in this. Why I refuse to plug in this? Always positive. So let's plug in 0 on this side. 0 minus 3 is negative 3 with minus in front positive. Let's plug in 10. 10 minus 3 is 7 with minus in front is negative. So what will you say? Whatever the number is, you can determine it if you want or not, because we're not asked to determine it. What will this be? Uh, we hope, yes, because this is increasing and this is decreasing. Definitely, this is the absolute max. And that will be P of 3. If you want to find it, you find it. If you don't, that's fine. We're only asked to find how many... Find the number of amplifiers for which the total weekly profit is a maximum. But you have to show that it's a maximum. Remember, this is just a critical number. Critical numbers can be max, can give a max, can give a min, or nothing. None of the above. So without this proof that this is a maximum, I can get full grade. Good. Um, the function n of t equals 0.8t plus 1,000 divided by 5t plus 4. Gives the bodily concentration n of t in parts per million of a dosage of medication after time t in hours. Use differentials to determine whether the concentration changes more from 1, 1 to 1.1 or from 2.8 to 2.9. Okay, so if you remember, we proved that f of x plus dx is approximately f of x plus f prime of x dx. We remember that. Do we remember this? Do we remember where it's coming from? It's coming from delta y being approximately dy. Delta y is this minus this. dy is this piece. So we are asked whether, one more time, it says um, 
does the concentration change more from 1 to 1.1? 1 .1? 1? From 1.0 1 to 1.1? 1 .1? Or from 2.8 to 2.9? How would I determine the exact? For the exact change in from 1 to 1.1, for this one, I will find f of 1.1 minus f of 1. That would be exact. How will I find the exact for this? Well, from f of 2.9 minus f of that's it. That would be the exact. But the problem is not asking us to do that. The problem is asking us to, it says, we use differentials to determine whether the concentration changes more from this or from this to this. So all I have to find is dy. I have to find dy, which is f prime of x dx. And the first time I have dx, which is 0.1, but with f prime of x being 1, f of f prime of 1, with f prime of 1. On this second situation, still 0.1, but this time is f prime is 2.8. That's all I need to do. I'm not asked to find the exact. Can you? Yes, you can. So I'm only asked to find dy. Then dx is 1.0 or 0 0.1? No, 1.0. And dx is 0.1. Okay. And x is 2, 0.8. And dx is 0.1 as well. Is that clear or not? Okay, so this we know that this is an estimate of the change in y for a minor change in x. Let's find it first. Exactly. So let's find dy first. Let's take it slowly. So I'm not asked to find the exact. This is the exact, and this is the estimate. I'm asked to find different using differentials. So that's the dy. That's the differential, not the exact. So dy will be f prime of x dx. But this is our f prime f. So we have to find n prime first. So let's do that. n prime of t. The denominator, 5t plus 4, everything squared. And now let's differentiate. The top prime is 0.8 times the denominator, 5t plus 4, minus the top, 0.8t plus 1,000, times the denominator prime, which is 5. Let's continue. We have to try to simplify. 0.8 times 5 is 4t, plus um, 3.2 minus 4t minus 5,000 over 5t plus 4 squared. That is pretty nice. So this is negative 5,000 minus 3.2. It's 0 0.8, 3 from 96, 9, 9, 4. Correct me if I'm wrong. 5t plus 4 squared. In the first situation, from 1 to 1.1, x is 1. In the second situation, from 2.8 to 2.9, x is 2.8. In both situations, dx is 0.1. 
So now all we have to find is n prime of 1 and n prime of 2.8. Which one is larger? We will conclude that there is more change in y value when either x changes from 1 to 1.1 or from 2.8 to 2.9. You know me, I'm going to plug this in the calculator and then plug in 1 and then plug in 2.8. So let's plug in that. Clear. So negative 4996.8 divided by parentheses uh, 5 x plus 4, everything squared. So now second end uh, table, and I am plugging in 1. And I am plugging in um, 2.8. So, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. OK, let's go back to the function. Sorry. So the function is negative 4996.8 divided by 5x plus 4 to the second power. And then I went to sec uh, second and um, second and table set. And when I plugged in 1, I got n prime of 1 to be negative 61.69. We'll write the measurement unit in a minute. And for 2.8, 15, negative 15. So it decreases. That's fine. Uh, measurement unit, what was it? Um, parts per million per hour. Parts per million per hour. Same thing here, same measurement unit. So now we have to make a decision. Which of these two, it says, use differentials to determine whether the concentration changes more from 1 to 1.1 hours or from 2.8 to 2.9 hours. It turns out that the concentration decreases, in this case, more, more between 1 and 1.1. Why didn't I multiply by, by uh, the x? Because I forgot. Not to multiply the x. Both numbers. I mean, we didn't finish. This is fine, fine. But I did not determine dy. dy is f prime of x times dx. So this is correct. However, we have to multiply by dx. Okay, in order to determine dy. But that's good. I mean, the answer is clear. We already answered. But um, in order to find dy, dy is n prime of 1 times 0.1. And the other one is n prime of 2.8 times 0.1. So this will be negative 6.169. And this will be negative 1.542. And this is just parts per million. So that's what we should compare. That's the dy. That is correct. That's the rate of change at that point. But we needed to finalize dy. Very good. OK. So now this is another uh, question on the same idea. Find delta y and find f prime of x dx. So this is delta y and this is dy. Round to two decimal places if we need to. And we're asked to find this and this. So find delta y, which is f of x plus dx minus f of x, and find dy, which is f prime of x dx. So let's find those. 